Greetings sirs and madams, I'm Seraphic Zero, and today I'm bringing you my beginner's guide to Lance in Monster Hunter Tri Ultimate. Now, I wouldn't say that I'm the best Lancer out there, I actually I'm really far from that, but I'm a fairly experienced Lancer. I've uh, used Lance in Monster Hunter Freedom Unite and Monster Hunter Tri, and then uh, a whole bunch in Monster Hunter Tri Ultimate. There are a few other videos out there that are, you know, introductions to Lance or discussions of Lance, but I don't feel that they uh, are thorough enough to really help beginners understand the Lance and really to, sh like, they're not really good enough to show them how to get into it or how to start off with the Lance. So I'm just making this guide to pretty much uh, just be very thorough in discussing the Lance and everything it can do. We're just going to take everything slow and like uh, just try to hit all the topics that we can. Just to start off with a, a brief summary of the Lance, it's a weapon that's um, it's very heavy. It can be described as having a slow movement speed uh, well, when it's drawn, because uh, you can see that its walking speed is fairly slow. But uh, the thing about the Lance is that it's a heavily defensive weapon. It has, a, of course, this very large shield for you to block with. I wouldn't say that it's purely a defensive weapon because uh, the whole point of it is to... Uh, the, the point of its defense is to allow you to be aggressive um, in the face of uh, being attacked by a monster that you're hunting. Like, you can deal with the monster's attack and instantaneously return to going on the offensive. So I'd say it's it's an aggressive defense. And even though it's slow, that's not really a big deal, you know, you can always sheath your weapon and then close distance, or you have plenty of other options for closing distance, or primarily you can just wait for the monster to come to you. The weapon, I'd say its moveset is fairly simple, like, it just has thrusting attacks and a few other moves, and it uh, has very a very specific type of evasion and blocking that it does, and that's pretty much all of its moves, but I'd say that the way that the lance is used, even though its moves are simple, there's a lot of depth to the way the weapon uh, operates when you're in the middle of a hunt, and we're just going to discuss that a little bit. Another feature of the lance is... is is that it's an extremely precise weapon and you know that's going to be important in Monster Hunter because there is no lock-on uh, in this game per se you can't lock on to a specific point on a monster and if you need to be able to hit a specific spot on a monster like uh, like you need to specifically hit it in the face because you need to break its face in order to get a specific drop then Lance is not a bad choice, so, so you can like really aim specifically where you want to hit with this weapon. The attack speed on the Lance is fairly fast compared to some of the weapons in the game, like Greatsword and other things like that, so Lances do benefit a lot on having uh, high elemental statuses or, uh, or having um, status effects like Poison, Sleep, or Paralysis. I'd say the only real limitation to Lance is, uh, besides from its mobility, is its gameplay is really dependent on your ability to do stamina management. Because uh, all of its defensive options consume stamina, and pretty much you're going to be burning through your stamina when you're in the middle of a hunt. And your ability to manage all that's going to be very important. So, uh... Yeah, so that's the summary of the Lance, and let's go ahead and just start talking about some of its uh, its moves and things like that. So first of all, let's discuss um, the unsheathing like uh, moves for the Lance. And as you as we discussed earlier, like it does have a slow walking speed after it sheathes. So we're just gonna sh unsheathe the Lance using the X button, and it does this. So you notice the unsheathing animation does take a little bit of time, and so it is. Yeah, so just putting the weapon away. Because it takes so long, you have to 
find a good opening to be able to sh sheathe your weapon again because you're not going to be able to use items with your weapon out and while you are sheathing your weapon you're extremely open to enemy attacks and so you have to find a good opening to do that yeah you can sheathe while standing still and you can actually sheathe while walking like this too okay so there is an alternate way to unsheathe your weapon directly into an attack you do this by uh, while you're walking just go ahead and press X and your character would do a unsheathe directly into a forward stab like that and while yes it's much faster than unsheathing your weapon and then stabbing it uh, it is actually a little slow to execute like I've had a lot of times where I've needed to like hit a monster while it's running directly towards me and I'll unsheathe and stab like this but I'll end up being hit first because it is a little slow to come out that your unsheathing stab it is a fairly strong attack yeah, it does do a little more damage, but if you're going to base your lancing style around unsheathing, that's uh, that's something you only want to do against some specific monsters that move around a lot. But I think you'll benefit from having different strategies than that, usually. And uh, the last alternate way to unsheathe your your lance is to sheathe, uh, unsheathe directly into a guard position. And you do this by holding R and pressing X and A at the same time and it does this. It's a fairly fast animation and I find that um, your guard status actually activates as soon as the animation starts. So even at the very beginning of this animation your shield isn't completely in front of you but if a monster were to hit you it will block the attack. This is fairly useful if you just suddenly need to guard something. I usually do it if I need to... Uh, if I'm trying to like run up to a monster and it starts doing something, like uh, it's starting to roar or it's starting to turn to me and attack, I will just go ahead and unsheath into my guard position. And also, I find that if you're trying to position yourself very specifically, the the poke like this, it does move you a little bit forward and it makes it a little hard to predict the distance that you're going to have with the monster um, depending on how the monster moves. So a way to control for that, to control your for your positioning when you unsheathe is to just go ahead and unsheathe into the guard position because you unsheathe while you're perfectly still. Yeah, that's like a really specific thing but sometimes, yes, you'll, you will find a need for that. Okay, so that's basically the mechanics of sheathing and unsheathing for the lance. Now let's go ahead and talk about the types of attacks that the lance has. And yeah, it, ba it only has a few attacks. If you press X, you'll do a forward stab like this. And yeah, it hits yeah, just directly in front of you, low to the ground. And it has a fairly good amount of reach. If you press the A button, you'll do an up stab like this. And it's basically the same thing, it just angles upward. You'll do this if you need to hit a higher target. And also this does more damage than the forward stab. The forward stab, uh, I forgot to mention, it does, it does tend to move you forward a lot further than the up stab. While the up stab, it does angle up, it doesn't actually hit very, very high. Like, if you have a very tall monster, like a Plesioth, um, sometimes you won't be able to reach its, uh, its belly just with an up stab. Yeah, it, it hits high, but it doesn't really hit as high as most other weapons can. But it, it'll have its uses. Alright, let's see. Okay, so aside from the forward stab and the up stab, you have a swiping attack. You do it by pressing X and A at the same time. And it's an attack that, uh, it's not very strong in damage, and it's the only sweeping attack that the Lance has. 
this attack, it doesn't combo well into the other things, but uh, it's mostly there for defense against uh, minions like Jaggies and stuff. If you're getting crowded, you just do this to get them out of your way. And uh, you notice the attack, it does hit slightly behind you. So if you have something behind you, you can do this really fast to get it. Yeah, so I managed to hit Kayamba even though he's behind me. Those are its standard attacks. So let's go ahead and uh, discuss blocking or guarding a little bit. Now you guard with the lance uh, after you're unsheathed. You hold R in order to guard. When when you're guarding, you have to face your shield in the direction that the attack is coming from. And of course, when you're guarding, you can uh, you can change direction with the left stick, and you can turn around and you can walk and all that. So yeah, while you're while you have your shield up, you can turn around to position yourself. And I think uh, the sword and shield actually can't do that. So yeah, this is uh, this is a fairly nice feature to the to the lance is that its defense um, yeah it can reposition reposition itself. That's very advantageous. Now, when you do manage to successfully block an attack, um, depending on how heavy the attack is, you your character will either um, like will either just take the hit, or they'll get flinched or knocked back a little bit, depending on how heavy it is. Very heavy attacks will knock your, sh your your character back very very far, and the stun animation takes some time to recover from. So that you have to take that into consideration, and um, and while you're getting knocked back, that does can take up time, and it does uh, it it does some things to your positioning that you have to consider. There are skills that you can use, like uh, guard plus one and guard plus two, which will reduce the amount of knockback that you have. Now, in addition to knockback, when you do successfully block an attack, it will consume stamina. It's usually a set amount of stamina. It's, I believe it does um, consume more stamina for how heavy the attack is that you're blocking. And also, uh, the, guard, the guard skills, they do also reduce the amount of stamina that's consumed by blocking. If you have your stamina consumed, if you hold your guard, your stamina will not recover while you're doing that. But if you walk, or turn your stamina will recover so I recommend if you're on the defensive and your stamina bar isn't full go ahead and just uh, turn a little bit or just walk around slightly to go ahead and recover your stamina you're going to need it one option you have while you're guarding like this um, not something you rec I recommend that you do very often but if you press X while you're blocking you'll do a guard poke and this attack, it's uh, it has a fairly good amount of reach, and uh, it's fairly quick, but it does very very little damage. And uh, I don't really recommend you do this too often. You know, it, like uh, maybe if you're just uh, want to deal in a little bit of damage while you're stuck like underneath the monster, you're not really sure it's about to do. You can do a guard poke. Um, what I do is I use guard poke in order to uh, hit bombs often. Uh, let me go ahead and hit outside so we can demonstrate that. So I'm going to set this bomb down. And uh, when you guard poke a bomb, it should... <laughs> Thanks. Okay, when you guard poke a bomb, it should detonate the bomb and also block uh, the, the detonation of the bomb. So it shouldn't take damage. Like that. So that's not a bad way to set up bombs if you don't have small barrel bombs or something like that. Uh, let's head back inside. I think there are some animals running around, and I don't really want to run into them while we're discussing this. Okay, so in your guard stance, you can do something called a shield advance, and you perform it by holding forward and pressing X, and it consumes a set amount of stamina, but it, it moves you forward like this. And also, any attack that you block during the shield advance, 
for the most part, um, if the attack is not too heavy, you're not going to get knocked back. And also, uh, it won't. Con it will always consume this set amount of stamina, so long as you have the ability to block that attack. At the end of your shield advance, you can perform a shield bash by pressing X again after. And this shield bash, it does deal uh, KO damage. So if you hit a monster in the face often enough with this, they will get dizzy. But I find that uh, the the shield bash, it's, it's, it takes so much time and positioning to perform that it's not really worth going through the effort to do that. So I don't really do it very often. But uh, it's there if you need it. Uh, another um, feature to the shield bash uh, is it's actually a an attack that will like it, it can't be blocked and it will never bounce. Like let's say um, you're fighting the Agnactor and he has his armor on and your regular attacks won't be able to pierce it. Like uh, what you can do is you can shield bash and that's a way to just get in a little bit of damage uh, without your weapon bouncing because if your weapon bounces you're going to be extremely vulnerable. Another note about the shield advance is um, it's one of the few moves that the lance has that will actually move it forward. So it's very important for positioning for that reason. And a lot of times I don't use it for its blocking feature, but I actually use it to evade an attack that I know is coming. Um, again, using Agnactor as an example, he'll like fire his like laser beam and I'll just use it to advance to the side in order to evade that attack. And of course um, the shield is there for you to block attacks that's primarily what it's meant for but there are some other types of things that the, your, your shield will be able to block that you won't really expect it to be able to do. For instance um, if a monster roars you know you're most like a uh, Usually your character will like flinch and hold their ears, but this sh like you're actually capable of blocking a roar. Yeah, and your shield will deflect it, and sometimes you'll get bounced back a little bit, but uh, it's a lot better than uh, flinching uh, due to a roar. Now um, I know that it, it doesn't really physically make sense, but you can do it. Um, any other weapon in the sh in the game that with a shield can block a roar, so you may as well do it it's a lot better than having to recover from being s stunned. Uh, another thing that uh, you'll be able to block that you, won't really, that you don't really expect is you can block wind pressure. Um, like, uh, like say, like a Rathlos is flying around, uh, you're, you're right underneath it. Um, you'll be able to block that wind pressure. It, it will consume stamina, but it's a lot better than being stuck in the recovery animation from wind pressure, because that lasts a long time. <laughs> it really does. And uh, the last thing that you'll be able to block is uh, you'll be able to block um, quakes, like if the ground is shaking. And you'll experience that with uh, some monsters. They can cause the ground to shake, like uh, the Diablos, if it's uh, digging underneath you, or if Devil Joe is stomping on the ground, and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, blocking all that stuff is much more advantageous than being stuck in the recovery animation. Let's go on to the next topic. Related to blo uh, to guarding is uh, the counter that the lance has. And you perform the counter by uh, raising your shield first, uh, by holding R, and then pressing A. And there are two types of counters you can perform. The one I just did is the charged lance counter. Um, it holds the shield up for a much longer time. And the one I did just there is the, uh, the fast counter. And it raises the shield for only a moment and then uh, stabs. And the way the counters work is for the charge, like as soon as a monster hits your shield, your character will instantaneously uh, counterattack with an upstab. And uh, the same thing goes for the quick counter. Although the, the quick counter does have a much lower uh, t like like window in order for uh, the, the attack to be blocked. But uh, they're both pretty effective. Um, 
to be honest, I have a little bit of trouble controlling the difference when my character will perform the quick counter and then the long counter. But uh, being able to use both is going to be advantageous for you. The damage on the, the charged counter attack is, uh, I guess, slightly higher than a regular up stab, but it, the difference is so marginal that I don't really find it effective to use for any reason. Like, um, I guess if a monster is asleep and you need the damage multiplier, um, you could try it. Um, I don't know the exact damage numbers for the Lance's attacks. Maybe that one's its heaviest one. For the most part, I just do an, un an unsheath like attack in front of a sleeping monster if there's nobody else around with a more damaging weapon. Yeah, the counter, the most important thing about it is timing, uh, positioning, and the direction you're facing, so you want to make sure you have all that to your advantage when you're trying to perform it. And uh, like your guard, it, uh, it can be broken by an attack that's too heavy. Um, if the attack's too heavy, sometimes um, your character won't perform an up stab. Your character will stab forward instead. And also, if an attack is much, much too heavy to be countered, um, your character will actually be knocked back and won't counter at all. It'll just behave like a regular block. Oh, and uh, I forgot to mention something about guarding. Is that uh, when you guard against an attack, um, sometimes you'll take uh, chip damage, wherein you're, you actually will lose some of your hit points. And uh, this happens, um, it's it's mostly dependent on your defense stat, as far as I can tell. Um, so if you have high defense, you have a less chance of taking chip damage. And also, um, if you have guard skills, it'll also reduce the chip damage you take. So uh, take that into consideration. Like, uh, if you are nearly dead, and you're stuck in a bitch, and you're still guarding, and you know you're about to take chip damage, you probably need to do something to get out of that situation, and blocking is not the best idea when you know you're about to take heavy chip damage. And it's best to just uh, probably sheathe and get out of the way instead. Okay, so... Um, as for the counter, it does have um, a very specific function when you're comboing with the lance, but we're going to discuss that uh, a little later in the video um, when we're specifically discussing combos. But um, one last thing to bring up about the lance counter is from a guard position, if you need to get back to attacking, it is uh, much faster to go ahead and start your attack by performing a counter. And for the most part, um, this takes a lot less time than releasing your guard and then attacking. Let's compare that again. Yeah, much, much faster. So, yeah, that's an option you have if uh, you block an attack. Uh, you didn't counter, counter it per se, but you, you're you going to go ahead and want to start attacking. Go ahead and perform a counter and that'll let you get right into your combo. Okay, and we're going to need to take some, we're going to need to recover our stamina to discuss this next thing. Oh, this is a lot of energy drinks. <laughs> and while I'm busy chugging these, uh, I do like using energy drinks over eating steaks because uh, the animation is a lot shorter and um, you can't eat steaks underwater, <laughs> so yeah, you can use energy drinks, so I tend to carry those instead of steaks. Okay, another thing that the lands can do is, uh, some would argue that this is actually the real world, ap real world application of the lance, is that the lance has a shield, uh, has a charge, and it does this, and uh, your character will run forward at a fast speed, and it'll consume stamina while you're doing it. This is a, a fast way to get around, and um, your character will actually resist wind pressure while you're doing it. Um, that's that's a feature to it. I don't find it like really all that useful, but um, yeah, it resists wind pressure. 
Let's see. Oh, these things are kind of far away. And uh, you can turn slightly while your land's charging. That Apnatoth, it died a little too fast, but uh, if you if we can get another target, you'll find that uh, the Lance Charge actually um, it deals a lot of rapid hits in a small amount of time. Um, I think a, a phrase for this is Groby. It's kind of like it's it drills or grinds damage like into your target. And while that seems very it seems very advantageous, the damage that it does is very very low, and uh, doing that consumes uh, your sharpness very very quickly so it's actually an extremely awful way to attack when you could be just stabbing instead and getting out a lot more damage uh, while consuming less stamina so don't use the lance charge for dealing damage an awful idea it also has uh, some other things with it while you're lance charging you can uh, you can end with a stab like that by pressing X again, and that's actually the highest damaging attack that the Lance has. But uh, it's fairly hard to hit with, but uh, it's there. Oh, that's a great Jaggy. Okay, and... Ah, he's a little too small to demonstrate that, but... Anyway, while you're Lance charging, if you want to cancel the Lance charge, you can just press B. And that will cause your character to interrupt the charge. Let's see. A really bad feature of like doing this is it will it will cause you to stampede over your your allies, and they will get knocked back like really far. Yeah, like that. <laughs> and you, you saw how it happened to Cha Cha too. Wow, he is that's good. That is very interesting. Anyway, so um, be very careful when you're using the lance charge. Don't hit your allies with it, no matter what, because it will make them very upset. Uh, the only the only times you should really be using the lance charge is if uh, you need to like close distance with a monster very quickly, and you have to shoot, and you don't want to like sheath your weapon and run after it, you can use your lance charge. Um, it's also a very rapid way to travel, um, like before the stamina consumes, so if you really need to like run away, like in a retreat, you can do this to get through an exit. And it's also a very fast way to travel underwater. But uh, of course, um, it consumes your stamina really fast. And uh, I find that um, the fact that it, it, it moves and deals damage at the same time it's a very good thing to do um, if you're chasing after a monster that's limping. And hopefully when you're doing that, you will be able to uh, flinch the monster or trip it like uh, while you're performing the lance charge. And, uh, and maybe if uh, you find that your character is about to get ahead of the monster or your stamina is about to end, go ahead and uh, just go ahead and put one of these into the monster and deal as much damage as you can. And uh, I think there actually is an alternate way to uh, activate the Lance Charge. I think um, from a guarding position, yeah, if you hold guard and you press the plus button, or the kick button, uh, your character will go into the Lance Charge. Uh, that's an, al an alternate way to activate it. Um, yeah, I don't really use that too often, but it's there. Oh yeah, and also there's one other way, is you can hold guard and press X and A at the same time. That will also Lance Charge. Yeah, so apparently there are three ways to do it. Okay, so that's Lance Charge. Let's go ahead and discuss uh, stepping or evasion for the Lance. And uh, this is a very strange thing about the Lance compared to the other weapons. So let's go ahead and unsheathe and show you. So normally when you have your, your weapon put away and you want to roll, you just press B and you do this. And your character just rolls forward depending on the direction that you're facing. And, you know, that's that's naturally... Yeah, that's obvious. That's that's how it works. You just roll forward. You roll the direction that you're facing. Now, for the lance, um, the lance actually cannot roll at all while it has its we it, uh, your weapon on sheath. And uh, that's, that's, that is that's that is a disadvantage we're dis going to discuss uh, a little bit later. But... Uh, 
Like, if you press B while you have your weapon unsheathed, what your character will do is perform a back hop. Like that. And you can train, you can chain uh, three back hops in a row. Like this. And your character will always uh, back hop in the opposite direction that you're facing. So, forward. And if you face to the right, you'll go left. Face left, you go right. If you face the camera, you go that way. It's always backwards. Now, um, when I first started using Lance, this was extremely disorienting. Like, I would, like, I'd be fighting a Jaggy, and it's coming at me, and I'd want to go forward. So, I'd be facing forward, and I press B, but I go the opposite way. I ended up being the opposite place that I wanted to be, and ended up getting hit. So, this is something that's going to take a lot of time and practice for you to get used to. Um, it's kind of second nature to me now, but uh, it's it's I mean it's really awkward and counterintuitive, so it's gonna take time to get used to. So what you have to do is just um, get used to facing in the opposite direction you, you want to go, and uh, just use the back hop to hop in the direction you want to hop in the direction you want to go. So if I want to go forward, I just do this, and. Um, the reason the lance has a back hop is uh, it may not be very obvious, but you notice that um, all of the lance's attacks go forward, so it's very dependent on the direction you're facing. And when you back hop, you move backward, but your character is still facing forward. That's the reason you have a back hop. It's so you can evade or position yourself but still be facing the monster and so what that allows you to do is position yourself and then immediately start attacking again without having to adjust the direction you're facing um, when you're using other weapons what often happens is uh, you'll roll forward and when you do that you'll often end up behind a monster and you have to turn completely around again in order to face them. But when you back hop, you're immediately in a position to attack the monster and you are facing the monster after you back hop. And uh, one other thing you can do with the back hop is uh, if you... Wait, did that just do like zero damage to me? But uh, anyway, if you want to close distance with a monster, one thing you can do is you can turn away from them and hop in order to close distance like that. So, yeah, Jackie's dead, but um, that's hopping and uh, stepping. And uh, you can do three of them in a row. And also, um, there's a variant of the step that you can do uh, that can only follow after you perform an attack. Now, if you attack and you hold a direction and press B, your character can sidestep like this. You can also do that three times in a row. And you can sidestep uh, pretty much just right or left. And, and you can chain these in uh, any order that you like. Like that, and uh, yeah, it consumes stamina. And um, yeah, there's yeah, there's no forward hop or step. You can only go side or back. So yeah, if you need to go forward, just turn around. <laughs> The good thing that does for Lance is it allows you to have extreme control over the positioning that you have as a character. So you can be in a really specific place when you're stepping. Like, uh, you attack and the monster moves, you can move back and then right, and then just start attacking again while you're still facing the monster. So you have a lot of control over your positioning. One last thing to say about stepping or evading is that during the step animation, your character has a, a very small um, moment of time when they are invulnerable to all attacks. 
and basically I'm honestly like un invulnerable to all uh, interaction with any other object in the game and uh, sometimes that that instant is referred to as the moment of invulnerability and it allows you to pretty much go through any sort of attack uh, if you have good timing and uh, there are skills that increase the, um, the the length of time for the moment of invulnerability and those are the skills uh, evade plus one and evade plus two there is a style of lancing that's designed or built completely around stepping without using your shield very much and it's called evade lancing and I'll, I will discuss evade lancing in a different video alright so yeah I believe that's all the moves that the lance can do so yeah you can stab and you can hop and you're guarding and your hopping will consume stamina so you have to watch out for that if you are out of stamina and you try to guard your guard will fail so you have to make sure you have enough stamina to defend yourself okay so now that we're, we know all the moves and we know about stamina management let's uh, discuss comboing with the lance now this um, can get fairly complex but uh, the lance has a three hit combo well it's allowed up to three hits and you can chain um, pretty much any of the hits together you can do three forward stabs or three up stabs or you can mix those together like this in any order you want really um, for the most part uh, most like I use the forward stab combo like uh, in order to cover more ground it moves you forward a little more than the other combos um, there are some monsters that aren't very tall, they like uh, their posture is very low to the ground, so oftentimes you'll just be using that on them. The upstab combo is probably your most damaging combo, and the, the last hit on that combo deals the most damage out of all three of them. And primarily you want to be you want to be doing this. And uh, this one deals the most damage. You'll have to be standing point blank on the monster, but you know, but that's where the lance lives. It lives underneath the monster so I'm sure you'll be cozy so there's that um, you can also combo into the swipe like this uh, you won't need to do that very often but you can and, and you can combo into the other attacks while starting with the swipe yeah but it is kinda slow but uh, I don't think you'll be doing that very often Let's see, uh, you can also combo into the Lance Charge. Oops, that's the wrong button. So, technically a little higher than a 3-hit combo, but yeah, a lot of people don't know about that for some reason, I guess. Uh, yeah, sometimes I will do that if I'm attacking and the monster hops back, I'll just immediately go into the charge to close distance. And I don't think you can exactly combo into a stab and start into a combo. The recovery time is long enough where I would not really consider that a combo, but yeah, you can start stabbing after you do the Lance Charge Thrust. Okay, and yeah, so you can Shield Bash and go immediately into a stab like that that's the combo I used to, that, that like this move is what I used to close distance and start attacking let's see uh, yeah so you can guard and go into a charge and uh, Here's one thing I want you to notice about um, your combo. 
So that's the three hit combo. And there is a long recovery time after your third hit. Yeah, so it, it takes a little bit of time to recover and then be able to start a new combo. But uh, you don't really want to just let that recovery time occur. What you can do is you can cancel it by performing a step. Like at the end. Or performing a back hop. And you can start attacking again immediately. And you can perform that step at any moment within the combo. You don't have to do it at the very end. You can do it after the first hit or the second hit. And okay, we already showed you the, the third hit. And yeah, you can step at any time. Do not feel obligated to fulfill the entire three hit combo. You, you, you don't have to. And uh, that's something to keep in mind if you want to be defensive. Okay, the next thing we want to discuss is uh, counter canceling. This is where you use a lance counter in the middle of your combo. One thing that changed from the older games is you can no longer perform a cancel, uh, a, a, a counter cancel after the third hit. After the third hit, you have to do a step in order to cancel. And uh, that does limit the defensive abilities of the lance a little bit. And uh, actually, let me go ahead and show you one. That. So after you perform, after you perform a counter, you can like uh, go right into another combo. And the lance technically has an infinite combo where you up stab twice and then cancel. But uh, you can only do that if you do two hits and then counter two hits and then counter. Uh, notice that this leaves out the third hit of your combo, which is the one that does the most damage. So you're just going to have to weigh that if uh, you need to like uh, do something that's a really long combo versus doing more damage and like, just doing a hop instead. Like, uh, There's no reason you should feel obligated to use the counter cancel. Yeah, the, the counter cancel, it can occur at any point within the combo, except for after the third hit. You can actually open with it, like that, like we discussed earlier. And you can do it after the first hit, like that, or after the second hit. Okay, so, yeah, I think that's the essence of comboing with the lance. What I want to reinforce here is you have a lot of defensive options while you're in the middle of your combo. Like, you can step and position yourself. You can perform a counter, perform a long counter. you can dodge in any direction you like. So while you're fighting a monster as the like as the like off as your offense and defensive like like moments change as your openings change, the lance has a lot of options it can take. It's probably one of the most flexible weapons. Yeah it it does have a few disadvantages, I'd say, like uh, the fact that um, it can only hop and it can't roll. Um, there are some statuses or blights that will like uh, require you to roll in order to get rid of them, like a fire blight or a slime blight. And since the lance can't roll with its weapon unsheathed, you have to sheath first and then do it. And that can be a huge disadvantage uh, against monsters like uh, the Brachidios. Uh, I have a lot of like difficulty lancing the Brachidios because if I have Slime Blight I have to uh, sheathe my weapon and then roll and at the same time um, be assaulted by this monster that attacks really really fast so uh, that's something you have to be concerned with 
but uh, yeah, for the most part, I find that uh, the lance does have a lot of advantages uh, and 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 a few disadvantages. But I think um, in like with the right judgment and practice, you can pretty much uh, I don't know, just put a situation to your advantage. The last thing I want to discuss is uh, using the lance in a team. And I'd say the lance is a very strong thing to have on a team because uh, it's something that can deal constant damage to the monster. Like, uh, it's able to stick right there underneath the monster. It doesn't have to sheathe and run around uh, in order to, like, uh, evade and protect itself. It can just stay right underneath and just keep stabbing away. And due to your defensive abilities, I find that um, lance players tend to survive in a team like you'll be in a fight against a monster that's just like demolishing your team and often you'll be the last person alive so you'll you'll probably be that person using the life powder to save everyone else and uh yeah <laughs> yeah stay alive don't like uh, a lance is rarely ever somebody's holding the team back because they're contributing damage they're not carding and they're there to uh, like like uh, deal damage and stun lock the monster and all that stuff and uh, your shield is also very useful like normally you think uh, the shield is just like for defending yourself but you can actually use this to defend your teammates too like uh, there are certain attacks in the game uh, mostly ranged attacks like fireballs and things like that and also like uh, you actually jump in front of your teammates and block them and so they won't get that hit and uh, so the, a lot of those attacks, like if they hit the ground, they'll have splash damage or, ex or an explosion animation. But if they hit your shield first, that won't happen. They'll just dissipate. Like uh, those are attacks are like uh, the Barry off snowball or the Gaia Cruises lightning ball. If you get in front of your teammate and block it, that will protect everyone. Like there will be no splash damage. So that's something you can do. Um, a good thing about the lance also is that because it's so precise. Um, you'll rarely ever be knocking over your allies, especially if you're not lance charging. Please don't do that. Um, yeah, you won't be interrupting your allies, so everybody gets their maximum time to deal damage. And also, um, a, conversely, the lance is actually very susceptible to being interrupted by its teammates because, uh, yeah, because it has low mobility. It's you're always sitting right there underneath the monster obviously that's where everybody's gonna be attacking so like if you have a lance player on your team uh, try to be considerate and uh, don't trip your lancer uh, the lance doesn't really have any combos that make it invincible to tripping so you're gonna get tripped a lot uh, don't trip your lance player yeah the last thing to consider is a uh, I guess the the lance can deal a pretty good DPS, like with uh, elemental lances, and uh, yeah, I, I find that uh, like a team of lances can pretty much just obliterate a monster. Especially like if you have a bunch of dragon lances, you can really take out like a Cedaeus. And uh, the last thing to consider is you can go for a status lance, like a lance that deals poison or paralysis or sleep. And because the lance attacks so quickly, you can get off statuses uh, fairly well. And uh, that's one way you can help your team. Like while your damage output will be slightly lower, because um, you have the ability to inflict the status, that'll keep the monster still for your team, uh, therefore raising your overall DPS. And uh, yeah, I believe that is all. That's all the ins and outs of using the lance. Uh, all the mechanics at least. Um, there are a few more topics to discuss, but uh, that's going to be it for now. Well, that's a fairly long video, but um, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to write, and I'll do my best to answer you. I believe the next video we're going to discuss uh, different styles of lancing. Uh, specifically, there's going to be guard lancing, evade lancing, and uh, counter lancing. So. Yeah, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching, and yeah, have a good hunt. Bye.